Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerd Steve, and tonight we will be pl not playing Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. That's right, you heard it. We are going to be playing one of those other RPGs. We're going to be playing Cipher System. And uh, Stephen Partridge has been kind enough to jump into the GM's chair once again. Uh, Robin is back from wrangling a kobold, and we have a new player has entered the fray. We have. Uh, uh, Mootly hanging out with us tonight as well, but with that, I'm just going to throw it right to you, Stephen. Set set it all up. Okay. Well, hello, welcome everybody. You can see we have a nice little slideshow down here with character sheets for you guys. Hey, um, and you should hear. Uh, and this is the reminder for all of my players who may not have it up yet. We have Sirenscape. We love Sirenscape. It's an awesome resource for GMs, no matter what game you play, because it has all kinds of cool sound tools. We like it. Um, we are starting our uh, Supers campaign. We're using Cypher System by Monty Cook Games. We love it. So I'm just going to dive right in, and we'll meet our players. So the skyscrapers of a retro-futurist city, Kistopolis, rise into a sky painted purple-red with industry and smog. Its spires tower like sentinels standing amidst a mountainous forest. And the only imposing guardians of the city that uh, it's seen in five years since the A-listers first disappeared. Since that infamous day, punsters, B-listers, and mundane mobsters run rampant, scarcely checked by law enforcement. Bank robberies and more showy crimes have usurped the digital that have become less common as security has evolved. Heroes and villains are a dime a dozen in every sense. Yet some hold out hope for a glory day to return when the bastions of justice fly the skies and swoop on evildoers. Today is not that day. Today, Miss Bianca Legrand, the second period science teacher, now wraps a ruler on the desk of her student as he scarcely pays attention. Excuse me, Mr. Lampley? Yes? Are you paying attention? No, I was calculating the dimensions of an experiment I'm working in. Well, if you could please turn your attention to the class at hand. She runs this perfectly manicured nail over your desk just a little bit menacingly as she glares down at you with this face that is just always glamorously made up. Her hair in some immaculate design. This day, it happens to be a beehive shape. Okay. She looks around the class, um, never making eye contact with your schoolmate, Katie, as she continues on her stint about hurricanes and... Okay how to best prepare for them. Now, clearly, the best way to deal with a hurricane is to not even be in there, but we all know that sometimes you just can't help it. So uh, don't anger Mother Nature, people. And as she begins her little tirade, a bell rings, indicating that it is time for the television. School begins playing, and you see a weatherman, a portly man with dark skin and a purple tie, begins explaining the weather, fuddling through it a little bit. And uh, watching from the other end, on the other side of a screen, the man who really reads the weather sits there and tries to get this poor man to be able to focus well enough to understand what it is he's actually saying as he fuddles through. The same station plays in a home with probably Gothic sensibilities, definitely dark at the moment, as well as a local dojo that is currently not operating. These five different locations, well, four different locations with five different people are going to coincide. Mr. Lampley, Leo Lampley, please describe yourself for everyone. Sure. Well, while Leo is sitting in his desk watching it, he's also uh, calculating his notebook. Um, the 
trying to find the inverse of the theory that you can aim a high energy laser beam into clouds to make it rain or trigger lightning of like how to, could, he's trying to figure out how you would pull the photon lasers out of that to stop it from happening. But yeah, he's just a nerdy, scrawny uh, senior in high school, uh, lanky, um, just got like sort of nerdy 1950s haircut, short sleeve button up shirt, you know, pocket protector, um, you know, he's probably got a tablet, I guess we're in the, is, 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 well, you tell me, is this like a retro futuristic in, in that sense? Mm-hmm. Or it's like, yeah, people, okay. Yep. So he's got his yep. retro yep. looking tablet, but he's working on that. Um, and just sort of like, he's already gleaned whatever he's going to from the TV. Okay. What does Katie think of this person who's now being yelled at by Miss Legrand, who's notorious for yelling at her students when they get out of line? Uh, Leo is a showboat. Uh, Leo is not very real, but very, not very interesting to Katie because she is once again staring at her giant ancient book that should stand out. But the fact that Katie is just so invisible to everybody else that nobody notices that she's ever even there as she's like pilfering through these pages of this ancient book with like this Bartik styling on the outside. She occasionally looks up at, at Leo. Something about Leo always like caught, catches the the corner of her eye, but she never says anything because that would mean interrupting her studies. And she's very focused on this book. Okay. Um, as Miss Legrand uh, approaches the cabinet, she pulls it open and she produces a bingo roller, like a tumbler with all of the different uh, balls in it. And you already know, both of you know that your names are all inscribed on a ball. As she begins rotating the tumbler, the jostling just echoing through the silent room as many pray for who they will or will not be paired with. She goes through several pairings of people, most of them people that would never hang out ever in their lifetime. One pair she separates on purpose because they're dating and having drama and she just doesn't want that mess. And then she reads, (laughs) uh, Mr. Lampley and uh, um, a quiet one. Uh, Katie, was it? Katie, yes, Katie. Like Katie. You too. So she looks at you, Leo, her eyes widen to an almost like vicious look briefly. And then she turns to Katie and it turns normal. You've got your work cut out for you. <sighs> What's the project? Dazzle me. Talk about oh. the weather. Talk about hurricanes. Talk about anything that fascinates you regarding the weather. Because you know we have that field trip tomorrow. Can do dazzling. Heidi just quietly picks up all her books and toddles over because she should have a tablet. But oh she yes, has oh yes, there are books and tablets alike because some people prefer the pages, some people prefer the digital. You've even got uh, hollow projectors that can offer you a sleeker version of what a tablet could normally offer with a bit more flexibility. And as you two uh, shuffle out amidst the throng, she shouts after you, make sure to read chapter 12. And as you shuffle out- I read that last year. Chapter Back at the weather station, the cast has just finished. And uh, you see, uh, meaning you, Ted, your character, sees this uh, portly fellow who's kind of more full of himself than makes sense for him to be. He uh, sort of waddles his way over and he's like, well, wasn't that a good uh, weather uh, thing today? What do we call those? A cast? Uh, one, uh, three cast? Three cast? No. Nah. How many casts? Are there? Four cast. Four. There's four of them. Four cast. You really thought that was good? Well, uh, of course. I mean, everybody loves me. Are you sure? 
And uh, you hear, you see this woman who uh, she just has this uh, short crop, no nonsense, black hair. She comes over and uh, wraps on your uh, monitor with the projector screens all around you right now. Uh, the Mr. Smith wanted the both of you in his office for a moment. Uh, now or? Well, I mean, yes, now he's sort of in charge. Okay. If you make him wait, that's up to you. I'm just delivering the message. This very outdated, you know, brownish, uh, you know, suit. He just kind of brushes off a little bit, probably some crumbs or ash, who knows, you know, fall, fall to the, the ground. And he just kind of slowly meanders in the direction of the office. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, of course, the uh, portly fellow you know as Albert will follow. Um, his, he'll, try, his he'll try to, like, let Albert lead the way. So if he's, like, a half step behind. Okay. Um, that's difficult to do because Albert waddles and he is fairly slow as a general rule, slow moving, but um, with the sort of personality that many people gravitate towards. Um, so he just sort of like waddles along and gets ahead of you and then he sort of like notices and feels pretty proud of himself because he's getting ahead of you now. And so he keeps going and uh, it's, Albert it's Rogers- more, It's more of a, a tactic because if I'm behind him, he's not going to turn around and talk. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So he opens the door to Mr. Smith's office and allows it to start closing without holding it open for you. Um, you know that he's always kind of had a little bit of a problem with you because for whatever reason, this man has it in his head that you must think he's stupid. Um, whether you do or not, that's your I probably, I probably do. <laughs> but he definitely thinks it. Uh, so I we're close and I'll just take take a moment uh, to just kind of like still my breath and not still my breath, but like you know let out a let out a sigh, get my head together, clear whatever fog might still be lingering from my last break, and uh, you know open up the door and move on in. Okay. And uh, you notice that Albert takes the padded chair and leaves you with the uh, hard one that's left. Sure. Um, and uh, Mr. Smith sort of gestures to the chair for you to sit down. Well, I, I, I walk in and I, you know, do a basic head nod and you know, sit, sit down without being asked. But imagine I don't, I'm not moving quickly enough. Uh, so I'm in, in process by the time he gestures. And he just kind of gives you a side eye, gives Albert a side eye. He's like, you're really going to have to pick up your pace there. My apologies. I mean, with your, uh... well, see, that's what I need to talk to you both about. So uh, just so happens that uh, studio's fallen on hard times. Lately, the uh, forecasts have been more wrong than right. And, uh, People aren't liking that too much. Isn't he, that how weather typically goes? I mean, it's a joke, sure, but we got to get it right more than wrong or they're going to not even have a need for us. Now, Albert, don't get me wrong. Your personality is great. We love you. But you, you're supposed to be the brains of this operation. I get it. You needed somebody else to present because you're just a little slow moving. But here's the thing we got to cut corners somewhere so i don't know an easy way to say this albert you can't and he just looks dumbstruck like genuinely like he had no idea this was coming so i'm uh, fired then yes but only because of budget cuts because we got to give him your job, but I don't want to do it. But we got to do it. Money says, money talks. Wait, wait, you, you're. I'm going to do my job and his job. That's the idea. We can give you a raise. We can give you half his salary. 
We gotta cut corners. I look, I look over at him. How does Albert respond to that? There's like tears just starting to roll out of his eyes at this point. And then he looks at you. You didn't have to make me look that stupid. I didn't write the script. I You're just... the one getting it wrong all the time anyway. And he throws some of the items off the desk. Waddles over to the door. Say the less you've heard of me. Slams the door. I think we've discovered our big bad evil guy. <laughs> Revenge. Is there a so, journalist uh, standoff in the parking lot, which escalates quickly? Uh, so I'm going to be doing this starting I guess tomorrow that's the idea Uh, we're prepared to offer you like I said half his salary it's a good good raise but you gotta pull your weight and that means you gotta be entertaining enough that the people will watch I mean we show this we stream this to all the high schools in the tri-state area that's a big deal tri-state that's three states so, so you want like some kind of character? You want some persona? What do you look? You want for? me to? I'm gonna shoot it straight with you because you know I've always shot it straight with you. I don't beat around the bush. We want it, Albert. But God knows that man would lose his head if it was not attached to his body, and still sometimes he loses it. Well, I don't know how he got as far as he did. It's uh, kind of ridiculous. I'll do something. All right. Well, um, I'll need you to wear a suit, too. You want to, like, I mean, this is what I got. I'm wearing a suit-esque thing. It's out of fashion. Look, today is payday. Go out, buy yourself a nice three-piece suit, three pieces, that's one for each state, and then eventually we'll get there. We'll get you a better wardrobe when we can get you a better wardrobe, but I'll give you the bonus on the next paycheck, all right? So just go out, get yourself a nice three-piece suit. That's three pieces, remember, three pieces. Three-piece suit, I'm assuming tie and all? Of course. I guess we can make that happen. Actually, heck, I should have asked Albert for his tie. That came from that came from the dressing room. Yeah, maybe if I needed a belt, his tie might have worked. I mean, fair. But anyway. I mean, I imagine, you know, uh, Kiefer is a vast difference between the portly Albert. Not oh, yeah. emaciated, but, you know, Kiefer is very thin yeah oh and here here um maybe this will make it a little easier uh this is not a professional thing this is just me to you uh the wife clipped this one and he offers you a coupon for 50 percent off at the already discount outlet suit store at the mall <laughs> discount suits got it it's so uh, much Just make sure there's three pieces to it. All right. Uh, I'll be there. All right. All right. Uh, I'll probably, I might see you there. Who knows? My kid's taking karate lessons from this, uh, what you call some kind of black belt master. He's, he's really over the top. Well, I mean, if that's what you're into, I'm not going to judge. Yeah. Well, uh, He's good for the kids, you know. He's he's got a lot of students, and so my my son saw him on the TV or something. So anyway, I'll I'll, I'll catch you later, Kiefer. All right. All right. Just, uh, I'll, uh... Three pieces. Three pieces to the suit. All right. One for each state. He calls one for each, one for each state. And he walk walks out, closes the door, lets out a sigh. <sighs> he just marches on. All right. Meanwhile, said Sensei, what are you doing with your day before your classes begin? 
uh, he's probably just like, you know, stretching, limbering up, and uh, getting ready to face his day, as he always does, and instill some character in these in these budding youths. Okay. Probably, you know, maybe has the maybe has the news on in the background. One of the okay. one of the few one of the few channels we get in the tri-state, all three states here. Uh, <laughs> you know, practice yep. some kicks in the air. Okay, as you are doing that, you hear something. It sounds like the uh, the gate that leads into your section of the mall properly, uh, like it's lifted up or rattling somehow. I will go check it. Is it like a place that isn't normally used or is? Um, so the uh, the mall is normally used, but it's not quite time for it to open. It's got uh, that later opening time because it's a small mall in the big city. Um, so yeah, you, 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 it's just not open yet. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go check it out. Okay. You see... A, uh, a piece of paper that has your name on it uh, and it's folded up into so it's almost like folded up into an envelope uh, is it like um, stuffed in the grate or something um, yeah it was actually slid uh, between the sections I, I do you know like I'm kind of like a little ways away from it and I can see the paper apparently they've written really big letters is anybody around um, n- go ahead and give me a difficulty three, uh, for perceiving something to look to see if you have anything related to that. Yeah, that's a first roll of the campaign. The die, Let's see how so... this goes. Um, 16 on a die, that's a nine, so it's, so it's only a nine, right? So that should be yep. good. Uh, do I see anything? Uh, okay. Uh, you actually see a shadowed figure wearing a trench coat and a uh, cap. It's almost very much uh, stereotypical mobster look um, as he uh, or they, I guess you can't actually tell if it's a he or a she, um, as uh, they go around a corner. Am I able to do anything before they go around the corner? Um, you can certainly try to, uh, lift up your, uh, grate and go out into the mall. Cause they are in the mall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm just, I rush up to the grate. I don't do anything to the grate. I just <sighs> inhale deeply and I'm trying to uh-huh. rip the coat off of them. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, that would be a, we'll say difficulty three again. Not super hard. All right, so this is my uh, my push push ability that we've kind of modified mm-hmm. a little bit. So I have to spend two uh, might points in order to do this, and that is an eleven on the die. Eleven on the die. Okay, um, so you get an eleven, and uh, this coat just blows all the way up, and this person slides forward. And you see that uh, it is a man, in fact. Uh, he is uh, bald with a goatee, uh, like mid dark skin, and uh, he's wearing green trousers and a slightly oversized, messily tucked in button up shirt underneath. Um, so now that he's kind of like disoriented a little bit, I guess I like, you know try and snatch the note as I go through the lift up the grate and go through okay and you head call hey buddy you okay uh all right he uh I'm going to say that you also need to make a uh functionally stealth or deception trying to hide that it was you that was the source of the wind okay um because you weren't in super form so uh that difficulty would be a two it's not super hard all right all right i'm just gonna go with the the, go with the dice this time and see what happens um you know what so that's a speed check right 
Mm-hmm. I got an edge of one, so I'll spend I'll spend the three, which becomes a two. Okay. To bring it down. So you got to roll a three or better on the die then. And that's an eleven. Okay, so yeah, easy to do. Um, you lift open the the grate and you walk out into the mall proper, and uh, you you can approach this man. Uh, you recognize him as being the one who owns the mm, arguably uh, not super well-to-do Capeless Capers Detective Agency that is housed in the mall as well. Hey, buddy, you should come into my dojo. We can help you with those balance issues. Uh, no thanks. Uh, what, what was that? that belly a a wind bit. indoors? Anyway, uh, and then he sort of uh, dusts himself off, and as he stands, he's like, okay, enough of the charade. So, uh, you gonna read that paper or not? I'll pull it out and open it up. You could have just knocked on the door like a normal person. I mean, I didn't know if you were sleeping or what was going on. Sleeping? uh, You can't get anything done if you're sleeping all day. You have to get up at the crack of dawn. Early bird, worm, man. Oh, worm, bird? I mean, well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't know about birds seeing as how much they blow in the wind. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I'm, as I'm like, I'm opening up a letter to see what it says. No. Um, so the letter uh, is an invitation to a uh, supers only gathering at his office of capeless capers later on. What, what is this, some kind of joke? I mean, I'm really good at karate, I understand. But I think you got the wrong guy. Yeah, and I do my homework. I'm good at homework. So, uh, at any rate, if you want to show up, show I up. I got a friend I'll pass this along to. Oh, uh, sure. Whatever you say. He's pretty good at karate, too. Is he? Well, uh, Tell your friend that uh, this could be very lucrative. And he'll just sort of uh, hand you a uh, card, which you would know as a credit, which is this world's money. Uh. Um, it, it's loaded. And uh, people can have multiple of these, but they usually have a dollar inclination if they aren't your personal. And this one indicates that it is worth 100 credits. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll put it, I'll tuck it in my gate. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, tell your friend to show up, will you? And uh, I've got one more stop to make. Sure. Watch your step, though, buddy. All right. Um, And he rounds the corner and goes into a side section of the mall where his office is located. But rather than going into his office, he slips into a hallway in this mall to a nondescript door. And a certain individual hears a knock on their door. Robin, would you like to tell us who we see lounging in the room and what room we see? So it's an absolute disaster in here. Like, it, you've got blackout curtains over all the windows, not a shred of light getting in. Uh, there's a small coffee table in front of a sofa that's, like, covered in bedding. There's, like, a pillow on one end and, like, this big uh, black goth comforter just, like, jammed up against the other side of the sofa. The coffee table has a laptop on it, which she was uh, previously streaming the weather on. And uh, there's not an ashtray, but a soda can that's just full to the brim of cigarette butts with, like, little ashes on the top of the metal bits. Uh, and she's, um kind of breaking in a second one and hasn't thrown away the first and so she like sighs uh stubs her cigarette out and just sort of grinds it on top of the soda can you hear a little plink as the butt goes in there and um this girl she's uh she looks like she's about 17 very pale straggly uh black hair all kinds of curls and she opens the door in her pajamas like her little bunny slippers have little vampire fangs on them She's like, can I help you? And you see the same man uh, 
Well, um, I just have an invitation for uh, a little birdie that I heard about. She like takes it as she's lighting up another cigarette, like looking at the paper. All right. All right. Well, money's the magic word. I'll make sure the little birdie flies your way. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, uh, um, are your parents home? He, wow, this had better not be anything weird. He uh, tries no, to suppress a smirk. It's, uh, the middle of the day. Right, right. They're at work. I, I forgot, people. uh, your family's very nocturnal, aren't they? Oh, they'd be home in the day if they were nocturnal. They're at work right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Just wonder. Yeah. I'm the one that goes to night school, but you have a good one, all right? And I'm just going to close the door. <laughs> all right. All right. And he just sort of, like, strolls along. Um, the day at the high school progresses, like normal, um... Would Leo and Katie make a point to meet up at any point during lunch or anything like that? Or do you just sort of arrange to meet at a later time? I don't know what do you think. Uh, Katie will very much uh, let Leo take the lead. She just kind of stares at him, holding her what book. Cl- what class oh. was that? Like what? I'm asking you, Stephen, like what subject what was it? Science. Oh, science? Oh. Yep. So Leo Lampley takes the lead? Is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you're welcome to come down to the lab. Uh, if, I have several ideas of things that we could work on, but you know, I'm certainly curious about your input as well. I, mean, I don't I think we've do ever met before. Are you a new student? <sighs> Katie, we have been in school together since the second grade. Really? Yes. Well, it's a good thing we got to work together before we graduate. Yeah, you know, good, you know, eight years or so of our lives. We had a locker yeah. next to each other one year. Really? I, truthfully, it's nothing personal. I don't really remember anybody that we've been in school with. That's okay. I get that a lot. I don't have a lot of friends. But who knows? Uh,. Yeah, uh, you know that uh, that uh, that news report got me thinking. We could make it rain in the classroom. What do you think? That'd be kind of fun. I think that might dazzle Ms. Legrand. You really like attracting attention to yourself, don't you, Leo? Well, yeah, if it was, I guess so. I mean, if pe- people are dazzled by my my work, you know, I- I'm just in it for the for the work. It's really fascinating what you can do with lasers and optics. I've kind of built like a pretty impressive little laser lab over the years, of just cobbling things together from my dad's store. I'm gonna go check it out. There's nobody ever in there. I have the key. Sure. All Why right. don't you show me your lasers and your science that you do? Excellent. And yeah, I'll lead her down and it's just like, you know, I mean, I figure they probably have like a, you know, tech lab or something. But over the years, yeah, I have just squirreled away little pieces and parts from Lampley Electronics. And there's like another little room si- off of the main lab. And that's, you know, I have a key to that. And it, there is like a, you know, crude and everything, but there is a laser array. Um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, is it actual lasers or is it just Leo showing off using his powers to pretend that there are actual lasers? Oh, no, they, he doesn't have any powers. It is just technology. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and I'll just sort of like flip it on and it powers up in like all these different colored like neon, you know, it, there's, this, you know, unnecessary things just for cool. But it actually, uh, and then I'll say, uh, here, give, uh, let me see, is yeah, you know, is she carrying her book still? Yeah. And it's, I'll be like, uh, may I see that for a second? Why? Don't worry, it won't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna incinerate it. This is an ancient book of my family. Why do you want to touch my book? Um, and I'll sort of just gesture to like a little glass tap plate there. And I'll be like, well, if you might just, just set it down there. 
I promise it won't get harmed. I'm not trying to trick you. Or anything, if you have any other, you know, just some object. I just think it'd be cool. I, it's a pretty neat looking book. She just pulls out like a yearbook. Okay. That no one has ever signed or ever written in. Sure. And, and places I will... it there instead. And hopefully with my training in optics, quantum electronics, and engineering, I can sort of just make a crude hologram of it where it's just like mirrors and lights sort of just like detect the outer edges of it and then project like a 3D hologram of that object like in the air above it. Uh, Yeah, that would be pretty easy to do, I would think. Okay. So, yeah, you've got this object swirling in the air now. And I'll so start are you just trying like, to become a magician? Is that your vibe? No, to be honest. And I'll sort of like look out the, you know, out the door and everything, and be like, with all these A-listers missing, I've sort of been working on a little project of my own. And I'll open like a little innocuous lacquer door, and there's just like a white, sort of skin tight suit on a hanger with like all these like LED. Uh, circuits on it and everything. Like, what do you think? Well, no one would miss you, Leo. Everyone <laughs> would always be looking at you. But that's the beauty of it. I can make illusion. I can make these holograms and they'll look there. I don't know. The only guy that's really been doing anything in my neighborhood is, is Blowhard. Have you heard of him? Oh my God, he's so awesome. He just karate chops people and he can control the wind. He can blow cars over with his breath. You're really into this superhero thing. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I went out a couple times. You don't think that it comes with like immense like property damage bills at all? Well, or like consequences? Sure. I sort of figure people like Blowhard can take care of that stuff. I, I sort of just watch the neighborhood around my dad's shop in the mall. It, you know, just rowdy behavior, that sort of thing. It's very impressive, Leo. Thanks. Um, so what are we actually... So you've shown me lots of pretty things. What has this got to do with our assignment? Well, like I said, we could. She, we, she asked us to dazzle her. I mean, we could do quite a few things. What's in that book there? Can you what read you Indonesian? Pre- I don't think I can, no. So it doesn't matter to you. It's just like the ancient, important, dark secrets of my forefathers. That sounds pretty cool. Perhaps you know, we can, nothing... I can help you shed some light on those. You can't even read Indonesian. How can you uh, translate mm. the ancient dark secrets of my forefathers? I don't know. You can do quite a bit with lasers. Is your answer to everything lasers? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my area of specialty, yeah. They're really cool. Are you... Are you sure you don't want to be a musician or like a European DJ or like I hear a pizza is like the place to be. I will close the door of the room we're in and go over to his, his little, you know, retro futuristic computer and I'll be like, oh, wait. And no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and like, like, he, <laughs> and uh, there is like a, like, there's like a beat playing and, uh, uh, I could be specific about the sign, but copyright badge. But uh, the, yeah, there's like a little uh, the little laser array like unfolds and it's like making a little show around that goes with the beat of the music. And be like, you can make music with lasers too. I told you they're uh, really cool. Just as this moment, as she kind of reaches like this almost like peak frustration moment, um, because of a previous history link between the two of the, these two characters uh suddenly you see this like flash of like a giant bird like appear behind katie that's like uh which is how tall nine feet tall like all of a sudden just flashes for a minute and then like goes away again 
Oh my gosh, did you just see that? Same. And I'll sort of like look at my computer, uh, you know, like look at his terminal, you know, his computer to see like, did that pick up any kind of weird anomaly? Did it? And when that happened? It was just like a spike of energy. It was like a weird, I, I didn't make that hologram. I don't know if you saw it, but it was like a nine foot bird just appeared in the room. Did you get like a laser in your eye? Do you have eye damage? Possibly. I, I have look, spent I, a lot of time looking at them. I can't work in this environment. There's too many flashing lights and too much like <laughs> bush, bush, bush. Can we just like, like go to the like mall where we can like sure. study at a table like normal teenagers? Yeah, that's where my dad's shop is too. Okay. Let's, let's, let's meet there after school. Okay, let, let's, oh my God, I've got a headache and Katie just like, <laughs> but as soon as Katie like walks out of the lab and mm -hmm. into the normal throng of other students, it's just like she <laughs> disappears. But then occasionally when Leo looks after, he just sees this like bird. Bird. Fascinating. <laughs> I just stand there thinking for a moment. Hmm. So uh, later at the mall, uh, how does uh, Lisa spend their time at the mall? <laughs> um, like, honestly, probably smoking in places that she's not supposed to be smoking and shoplifting shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Reminds so, me of my youth. Um, uh, so, Lisa, as you are uh, smoking in somewhere you clearly shouldn't be. Um, the sign's right there. <laughs> yep, it's literally, there's a no smoking sign, and then there is you, just sitting there smoking. Um, and uh, you see, um, would, uh, would Kiefer be going for a suit around this time, do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, he he probably left straight from the the office, and once he's kind of out of the office building, the little bit of the, the slow meandering nonsense, that's all just a show. Um, you know, so he kind of hurries on and you know, tries to get get things done. Okay, so. Uh... So, Kiefer, uh, you did have to work a full work day because you aren't fired. <laughs> so, uh, you you get off in the uh, mid-late afternoon and uh, then head straight for the mall. And uh, it just so happens that you see these uh, two kids walking up right around the same time to the doors as you are. Um, the two kids being Leo and Katie. I, I'll, I would uh, oh, step forward and open it for the old guy. Oh, here, after you, sir. I wouldn't necessarily say old guy. I'm a teenager. <laughs> Katie goes to walk towards the school, automatic door. Katie goes to walk towards the automatic doors, but they don't recognize us. So <laughs> then she goes through <laughs> the other door. So you know, with a you know a, a nod towards uh, Leo. Well, step in and you know, can continue on to discount suits. Okay. So Leo makes a show of getting the sensor so that it opens <laughs> after it didn't recognize Kate. Oh, no, actually, I just have a little uh, fab that just uh, it, when he's walking up, because my dad's shop here, I come all the time, I can hit it from 50 feet away. It's like, boop, boop. And it's like a little flat, a uh, little uh, oh, pulse. Oh, okay. Light. Man, yeah. I did the. I I I, I put it together. <laughs> See, um, that guy over there is walking toward discount suits, so obviously he doesn't have any money. <laughs> but the kid, the kid's got electronics that he is displaying rather prominently, so I am highly considering picking his pocket. I don't see a third person. Okay, the third person that's not seen gasps as she recognizes it's Lisa, as in. Lisa, Lisa, who left high school several years ago, the badass, baddest chick who stole that mascot that one time oh, and yeah. just keeps a second, t tightens her hands around her book and goes, 
Who steals an alligator? <laughs> they never found that alligator, I heard. Never, never found that alligator. <laughs> and uh, Lisa, as you're hearing this, you know that actually the mascot of the high school is a rock croc, which is a special breed of crocodile that lives on the shores of Castle Lake which is the lake that this city borders. So. so I push off the wall. I walk over. I'm like, crocodile, actually. And his eyes are just like, and she like, every orifice and object that she can possibly contain within her body is tightened in protection. So like, finally glancing over you briefly, she's like, uh, you're right, nerdlet. All right. <laughs> Did you need something? Is there something on my face? I don't think she likes to be the center of attention. Just eyes snap to Leo. <laughs> wow. The mascot thief in the flesh. And that's what you were staring about. Is it true? Yeah. Uh, I still have it, actually, if you want to see it at some point. Yeah. That's like, that would make us like the coolest kids at school. Uh -huh. It's like legendary. People still wonder where the, it is to this day. Yeah, maybe I heard you escaped into shit. the sewers and became a giant monster. <gasps> did well, he did become a giant monster, but he's not in the sewers. It's a giant monster? He's probably chilling in my bathtub right now, actually. Do you have to get a permit for that? Fuck if I know. She's so badass, she doesn't get permits for keeping exotic animals. That is badass. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Meanwhile, uh, yeah. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I didn't actually have anything. I was <laughs> making shit up. Go. Okay, I was just gonna say, uh, um, Dave, uh, your character, remind me of his name again, I'm sorry. Johnny Silver. Johnny Silver. <laughs> Johnny Silver in between classes. Here's some kids talking about a stolen mascot. That word stolen just catching in your very heroic ears. My crime, my crime senses are tingling. <laughs> and uh, they are loud enough that Keeper can hear, but that's up to you if you choose to engage with all of this. I've got a crappy suit to go by. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, is this this is going on while I'm in, during my class? Uh, in between classes, you have the last of the kids shuffling out, and you've got about an hour before your next class. So I am still I'll... smoking in the no smoking section. <laughs> I will yes. keep an eye on those kids, but as long as they don't seem to be breaking the law right now, I don't think we need to enact the swift, the swift hammer. No, I, I am. I am breaking the law right now. There is a no smoking sign right there. <laughs> There's a lit cigarette in my hand. And you would probably recognize Leo, right? Because he works also. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's two yeah, kids there, so you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, kid, are you ready to join? Are you ready to join one of my classes yet? Are you ready to become a man? Is build some character. Uh, I've got plenty of character. In fact, one of the thing ways I build character is helping my dad at Lampley Electronics. You know that, Mr. Silver. Well, it's excellent that you sharpen your mind, but you should also take care of you know, the vessel that houses that thing. Yeah, hmm. that's right. Are you ready to become a man, Leo? <laughs> take care of the vessel that and, houses your mind. And you, young lady. You're going to uh -huh. get cancer and die. Oh, I sure will. <laughs> It'll get me away from you faster. It's this little voice kind of appears and says, okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like you, nerdlet. <laughs> so I just kind of, I just kind of like, you know, uh, catch my reflection in the glass, you know, the plate glass outside of the dojo. go. And he's like got this like black slicked back hair and a ponytail and his black beard. 
Uh, and you, you can see like the words uh, Iron Wolverine across the back of his gi, his gi with this like roaring Wolverine uh, on it. He just kind of shrugs and you know walks back into his dojo. Can't see them all. Can't see. <laughs> we I can recommend some really good books for you if you like. You know about gender and like. Healthy expressions of masculinity. <laughs> hey, you were the one in my you. class too. There are more than one ways to be a man, sir. Yeah, you can break bricks, you can break boards, you can be really good at katas. <laughs> Have you got a brain injury? <laughs> I have been kicked in the head a lot, but it builds character. Not exactly the kind of character I want to build, I whisper to Katie. Thanks, Mr. Silver. I'll keep it in mind. I have meanwhile decided that I am not in fact going to pickpocket Leo. I am definitely oh. going to steal something from that guy over there though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'll, oh. and I'll move off to go. I'll, I'll say that to Kate. It's like, well, I have to go help my dad. It's like, you're welcome. Oh, no, we're going to work on our thing. Never mind. I take that back. I mean, re- really, I-, I have a very extensive understanding of geography and history. I could just, like, write the assignment. Well, that wouldn't be fair. What do you have in mind? What, what, what do you want to do a project about? The weather. Okay. I mean, I guess I could just write it and then get you to, like, make it pretty. Because she said dazzle, and that's not really my thing. Sure. I'm more about substance. Okay. Uh, hey, GM. Yes. Uh, Kiefer, he's like a, he's a, he's a TV personality, right? Yes, oh, yeah. he's a TV personality. And he just walked into the discount suit store. Is there any chance, like, they might, might have recognized him or he might have been recognized? Um, you guys, well, I mean, so he he's not TV personality the yet. Area, he's behind the, the scenes. So he's not actually on the TV yet. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, Kiefer, while you're in the, uh, discount suit store, you see a familiar face, uh, selling some of his suits for consignment. Oh, Albert. Oh, poor Albert. Well, are you sure it's, are, are you sure it's not more? Uh... I mean, these are these are nice suits. There's three pieces to them. That was important to my boss. Three. <laughs> oh. One, one for each state. Oh. Okay. And then he turns, and you see, he looks terrible, Kiefer. He makes eye contact with you, and he already has these big bags under his eyes and like tear stains because he hasn't even taken off the makeup from earlier from being on TV. <laughs> so it's like leaking down all over his collar. Like yeah, and, he's and almost he's like too pathetic. It's like, okay. In sweat. Girl, yeah. Man. <laughs> like, you, you did this to me? And um, he charges at you. And uh, I need you to make an initiative check. Oh, oh, oh darn. <laughs> it's gonna be fight, tight. Fight, fight. <laughs> well, I rolled like crap, but uh, I mean, if I if I apply my skill and effort, that's a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So uh, you get a fourteen as um he that that definitely beats him. Uh, so when he charges at me, I will just kind of like <laughs> step to the side and let him collide with whatever's behind me. Okay, so uh, you step off to the side and he charges with this fist raised and it's not hard to dodge this guy. You just kind of step aside and he stumbles and crashes into a mannequin that's displayed and it shatters the uh, display window. And the, the four of you in the middle of the mall see this. What the? I don't know. It's two old guys going at it. You guys you go recognize watch? that one of the old guys was on TV earlier. Oh, yeah. In school. 
Albert, I know you're having a bad day, but that's no reason to take it out on the, the suits that hope, hopefully belong to someone else someday. You want my suits to belong to somebody else, don't you? And he stands up and he starts trying to scramble over this display case again to get it. Well, you. I mean, to be fair, each one is enough for two. Oh. Are, they, are um, they fighting over suits? I think so. Um, so I need you to make a, a speed defense. Suit fight! Because speed is the default defense. Hey. Mr. Boomer, there's a fight going on Jeez. out here. Uh, well, that's a <laughs> natural 20. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm trained. And I can apply three levels of effort. And it's a major effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a major effect. So, what do you want the major effect? So to major. Be? Uh, I, I mean, you know, this guy's having a bad day. So I don't know how much more of a bad day. Maybe he crashes into like the expensive line of their discount uh, suits. <laughs> okay. So, um, so you just nimbly step out of the way. You guys watch. This guy's just like, you know, like Peter Parker in the Spider-Man movie when he's just like mm-hmm. going like that, back and forth, dodging everything. That's what this guy's doing. As this poor, um, befuddled man topples into the suit rack, and you see this woman. She just sort of like puts a hand over her mouth as she's watching this unfold in her suit shop, not even sure what to do. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else to do, Albert. This is not my decision. Katie starts sliding off towards, like, a change room or, like... A, um, is it stage room? A hallway. <laughs> okay. Unnoticed. Okay, so you just kind of, like, scoot, 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 <laughs> all the way off screen. Like and, then as soon as, and then as soon as that happens, she's all like making sure no one watches, takes the book and just kind of like starts pushing it into her chest. Okay. And then then all of a sudden a giant bird that is very tall comes storming out from the hallway. Okay. So from a side hallway ducking out, you see this nine foot tall eagle creature. (laughs) And uh, what is Elon doing? Start by rolling initiative. Which I'm hindered at, by the way, because Elag is not... Elag is a big, dumb bird. I'm gonna put a pin in this. (laughs) I I guess at this point, Johnny would come out for the commotion. I'm gonna put a pin Um, in that, too. Uh, An 18, but I do... I am uh, inhibited with initiative. So, So I would become a 15. 15. Okay, so uh, you, Johnny Silver, look out to hear screaming of bystanders as, like, men, women, children, otherwise, all running every which direction, trying to avoid this massive eagle monster that has just stepped out of seemingly nowhere. Meanwhile, there is a shattered display window in the discount suit store. The woman behind the counter is just, her hands over her mouth, Staring aghast, you see these two teenagers, two teenage, two teenagers that you were talking to before, still just kind of chilling there. And uh, you see a TV personality of the weatherman trying to attack some random nobody, just a skinny dude. I, you know, I guess he's gonna like try and rush in between them and like get get between them and stop them from fighting. Okay, make an initiative roll. <clears throat> that is a 16. 16. Okay, so um, technically you would go just before Elong then. So what is Johnny Silver doing? He's just running in between them? Yeah, like just doing, hey, come on, guys. You don't need to do this. You should, if you want to you hash out your differences, you should get in the ring and settle it. 
Okay. Um, I got a dojo right over here. <laughs> this is an intellect check. Try to persuade them. We'll oh say it's God. a difficulty of five. So that's five times three is a 15, but you got to get on a D20. I failed. 15 or better. You got a what? I failed. I got an 11. Oh, okay. So uh, you say that, and the, the TV personality just looks furious and frazzled as he's untangling himself from these suits, tearing them. He doesn't care. And so, uh, anyone... So well, what, what, keeper, keeper what are the actual... Em, what are the employees doing? She's staring. She's just aghast. It's just one lady staring and watching this whole thing unfold. Um, She's not paid enough for this. <laughs> so while while he's untangling himself, like, Kiefer's here to actually get a suit. So, like, he kind of <laughs> steps away, like, putting Albert out of his mind or out, out of, you know, out of sight. And he's going, like, he's trying to find where where is the cheapest section of discount suits in. <laughs> and he's looking for, you know, something that, that's, that's going to fit. And I'm hoping that it's something that's, you know, a hideous three-piece suit, you know, possibly something that's, you know, off color, maybe, you know, aspects of green and brown, just to, you know, fit his motif. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, Make an intellect check to try to search for that specific thing. It'll be difficulty four. Difficulty four. Uh, so, it's four. That's 17. 17, you easily find what you're looking for. Um, so as you're rifling through the suits, what is Elon doing? Citizens, be calm. Be peaceful. Do not harm this bastion of capitalism. <laughs> she start, she's talking to the weatherman, trying to calm him down as she okay. steps forward. Difficulty six. So you have I would like, because I am a troublemaker, because I am a risk taker, and this is going to be fun, I will automatically succeed that, thank you very much, but you get a GM intrusion. Okay, okay. So you succeed on getting him to be calm. The intrusion is, is that um, when you do this, you have to choose Leo, Lisa, or... Uh, Johnny Silver, who recognizes your word choice and cadence and has a 50-50 suspicion that you could be Katie. I will go with the magpie because that makes the most sense. Okay. And I will uh, give my experience point to Leo because the magpie <laughs> can't get one. And I will take one experience point. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. And then no, noticing that the situation has calmed down. And because Alang is an idiot, she will smile and go, have a great day, everyone. <laughs> and fly straight upwards. Okay, to the glass dome ceiling. Yeah. So uh, this <laughs> nine foot tall bird monster just pshoom, and shatters the glass roof. And there's glass raining from overhead. People are still screaming and panicked, and it is a mess. And uh, um, Albert just sort of untangles himself, flicks you the bird, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, Kiefer, and then- Is there anyone underneath the falling glass? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Is there what? Is there anyone underneath the falling glass? Um, No, because there was a giant monster standing there moments just, ago, so no one wanted to be nearby it. <laughs> and, uh, you now have the opportunity to purchase your suit. So, uh, you know, in the store, I'll, you know, kind of go into my pocket and, you know, pull out one of my smokes and, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, put it up, up to my, to my mouth, you know, kind of, you know, crook of the mouth, crook of the lips, you know, put the the suit down and you know, pay and smoke it on the on the way out. Okay, as you do that, the lady points at a no smoking sign. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's after I pay and like walk like out of the store. 
Oh, okay. Up and, you know, begin walking. I think uh, Leo's reaction immediately would be like, oh, is that, you know, is like Katie that I was with okay? And I'm sort of just like a little bit nervous because I don't see her anywhere. And uh, just sort of. Like, flies back around. <laughs> the book spits out of her in the service area. And she kind of is like, pretends to hide in like the um, corridor that she was in. Okay. Um, yes, Lisa. Okay, you know those pins that I put in things a minute ago? Uh-huh. Let me take those out real fast. So there was a fight in the discount suit store and a giant uh-huh. bird yelling at townspeople and making it rain glass and Mr. Silver immediately left the shop to deal with the chaos. Everyone was distracted. So uh, oh. where's the keep his cash? Is it obvious? <laughs> well, Johnny Silver, is it obvious? Uh, it pro- it's probably in one of the lockers in the locker room. All right, so not obvious. In that case, I'm have, just going to like does, start stealing nunchucks and just pocketing them, and then I'm going to leave. And he probably has like okay. a little office in office area as well. Oh, okay. Have. Well, if it's obvious where the office is, then that's where I'd be going and just like taking whatever's most inconvenient for you for me to walk off with. Does he have the first dollar he ever made framed? Or, or any oh! like... <laughs> Or any like uh, gold, uh, like statues Why? from like he, martial arts tournaments. Oh you know my god, I mean? I'm gonna steal your trophy. There would definitely be trophies. <laughs> medals. Yes. Yeah, I just like, I'm just gonna grab a couple Tri- of medals and a trophy, shove them in my coat, and leave. Tri State Karate Champion 1986. <laughs> So mall security finally gets there. And as Albert's already walking out, they throw him the rest of the way out. Because it was clearly Albert's fault. (laughs) Wow. He's the only one that did anything wrong. Apart from property damage by a giant bird monster. (laughs) So yeah, Leo, you were looking for Katie and Katie seems to be hiding in a little uh, off shoot hallway jeez thank goodness you took cover that escalated really quickly what happened I just heard crashing and screaming and people running about some kind of bird yeah a couple of guys started just really slap fighting each other at the used clothing store (laughs) then this giant bird talking bird came in and broke broke it all up and crashed through the ceiling it was insane. You can see Katie just kind of like sighs a little. <laughs> and you almost catch her just saying, <laughs> and then she's like, is it safe? Yeah, the, 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 the security threw the guy out and the bird just, I mean, there might be broken glass. I don't know. They probably should let the mall staff know. They clean that up. Okay. I guess we have to get this assignment done. Yeah, we can work at my dad's store if you want. I mean, it's not super busy and there's tables and stuff in the back. I just have to man the counter in case anybody comes in. Okay. Sure. So, well, yeah, we'll go. There's no lamp-lit. giant birds or falling glass. Nope. Uh, it's Lampley Electronics, but the E fell off, so it's just Lampley Electronics. Um, or it's, you know, it's broke or whatever. Katie. I, I will say it, it didn't fall off. It was stolen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> one, le- one letter at a time. Then, right? there, there, there's <laughs> a big illuminated E in my <laughs> living room. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, um, Katie, you have a piece of paper folded into almost an envelope in your pocket that you didn't have before. So, just so you're aware. Um, meanwhile, in the suit shop, Johnny Silver, you are there with Kiefer and this poor aghast lady who just now has to clean everything up. Well, I guess my work is done here. <laughs> Sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> then he heads back to his dojo. Someone you know asked if it, Someone asked if you were Joe Rogan, and I can't think of anything more Joe Rogan to say in that exact moment than <laughs> fend for yourself! 
sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, Ke uh, Kiefer, like, he laughed. Like, he, uh, he, he dodged the fight. He does just float through things, does he? <laughs> oh, oh, well. That was weird. Smoke, smoke's on the way out. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Also, uh, as you are leaving the mall, uh, Kiefer, this, uh, person sort of bumps into you just casually. Oh, excuse me. And I'm guessing uh, it's a dude in a trench coat and a. Yeah, and it a is. Green pants. It is. And you, he didn't, uh, mess up, find... he didn't mess up my new suit, did he? Uh, no, he did not. All he right. bumped into the other side you were carrying from what you were carrying. All right. Excellent. Man, and man, uh, you now have a paper in your pocket. I'll, uh, you know, check it out on uh, on the way back to wherever it is that I go from here. And what does it say? Um, so it addresses you as uh, the man with the leaf face. Um, your audience is requested at Capeless Capers here in the mall, just before closing. And it gives you some directions as to where in the mall to go and has a little mini map. I don't appear on camera yet. Do I really have an audience? And how can I get all of them to this place? I guess they must mean that they want me here. <sighs> Silly people in their way of talking. Just duh. And uh, can you just gonna, look like... at your paper? It's very similar. Oop. But addressed to the giant bird lady. <laughs> um, and so, uh, fast forwarding to the evening, let me ask, who is going? Leo, you have not received one of these. Mm -hmm. So it's in the mall. I mean, I work at Lampley Electronics still closing time, so I would still be there. Yeah. Do I see those people? Like, where? Where is Capeless Capers? I mean, you don't have to lay out the whole mall, but it's like, is it at the other end? Do I know where? You know, am I familiar with it, or can I see it from the, you know, the behind the um, counter? Capeless Capers is actually across the way from your parents' shop. Oh. And it sh it shares a wall with uh, what we would know, the audience would know, to be Lisa's apartment. You might or might not know that. Oh, then in that case, if I see people unusually going in there after they've closed, then I would close up the shop down my, and become suspicious, down my nightlight suit, and use my distortion ability to just bend the light around him so that he is just a shadowy spot and sort of creep over there. Uh, I don't know if there's like... So this is... We're, we're thinking of this as like a mall more than a strip mall now. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's like a mall. There's a little plaza. Yeah. So he could probably get... He probably lot. is familiar with like the the, you know, like the hallway that's behind stores and stuff, you know, that like just mm -hmm. like yeah. where there's people keep supplies and stuff. So yeah, I would try to creep over and see what's going on. Maybe there's something... Somebody's trying to rob the store up to no good. I don't know. So... so uh, keep, Mm -hmm. Kiefer or Winda would certainly go, but he would not be coming through the front door since there's a nice convenient hole, hole in the ceiling. Uh, he would kind okay. of fly in and like, he'd, he'd look directions as to where he's supposed <sighs> to go and like, essentially triangulate the fastest direct route uh, from above and just kind of like zip to a, to a, to a spot that he could somewhat hide and using using the the wind kind of like also do a you know a similar uh to what they just doing uh, can i amend what i said can i amend what i said uh pending ted's thing so maybe i'm just like taking oh. out the tra trash and i don't know if you want me to roll but like i see just you know this person flying down from the sky so that's what it would be like a streak of blue and green yeah so it's like what is that so i would go check that out oh yeah sure so, uh, that's cool with you, Ted. I didn't want to, you know, if you're... No, no, no. No, my own means. Blowhard is oh, going yeah, you're in just... costume, but he's got a trench coat thrown over it, and he's got, you know, the the, the um, 
uh, the collar is up and flared, and he's got you know like a, a wide brim hat on to kind uh-huh. of like you know hide the fact that he's also wearing his mask. And does he just have like a domino mask? He does have a domino mask. So there's no way we would know it was him. In other words, it's totally yeah. impossible. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, Alang uh, appears in their smaller form, not in their giant form, and once again looks at the hole that they made and goes, oh, convenient, <laughs> and flies down and just walks to the front door and knocks. Okay. So, uh, Leo, we'll mm-hmm. start with you. Okay. You are uh, taking out the garbage and you see a green streak overhead go onto the roof. Holy moly. What was that? And uh, yeah, I would try to uh, get up there. I don't know if there's an easy way or not, but I definitely want to go check it out. But I also, under his clothes, he has his suit and he pulls his mask up over it and his hood. And sort of, like I said, does it bendy light thing? So it's not <laughs> invisible. It just becomes like a blot of darkness. It's just like turning off the light around it. Okay. So uh, oh, you can find a fire escape pretty easily. All right. Um, yeah, and I'll creep up and just, I want to see, you know, who, who what is that green streak? What's going on? All right. So um, you get up to the roof and uh, when uh, do you think you would hesitate or just go straight in? Uh, so like he, he got up to kind of see where it was he's going and then he would zip on in. Okay. So uh, you arrive, there's a little bit of still smattered snow on the rooftop. And uh, there are footprints. There's also large bird footprints up here. Mm. And, um, and you don't see anyone up here, though. Hmm. Well, then I'm certainly intrigued by these f- both humanoid and avian footprints and would, would definitely follow those. Okay, so the human footprints are from when uh, who mm-hmm. then just well, shoot. I would, Im- I would imagine, like, the, the humanoid footprints, like... It's literally just footprints on the edge. There's no, not nothing. Yeah, he just landed right there. He just landed, looked, and then flew in. So that's what I would say. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, meanwhile, uh, while you, Blowhard, are trying to maintain a low profile as you make your way over, a large bird lady is just strutting through the middle of the mall. (laughs) And people are looking and they're just, whispering many are hurrying themselves out the mall's closing anyway um one of the mall uh officers sees her looks up at the place where she exited the previous day and then just averts his gaze and continues walking i did not see anything i cannot be held responsible (laughs) and right around the time the two of you make it uh to the capeless capers is when uh, the man flies through the hole that you made, Elong. And uh, um, so, Leo, you see these three currently gathered. Yeah. How would Lisa approach? Um. So I want to say that she uh, snuck in an hour early and hid somewhere so that she could like sort of. Uh, amorphously appear when everyone was assembled and it took a lot of dedication which she would never ever admit to having put in the effort to do Uh, and she's um, in full costume so like big heavy coat plague mask you cannot tell if it's a man or a woman under there big red lantern Um, and if you pay attention to the super scene this uh, entity has been seen robbing establishments in the past okay all right, so you're already there. Yeah, obvious um, villain is obvious. <laughs> right. Um, so, Leo, what are you doing when you see these three gathered down there below? Okay, so they're all sort of look like they're trying not to be noticed and like furtively gathered in front of capeless capers. Well, one of them looks like they're trying to not be noticed. One of them looks like he was just flew in because why not? And the other one looks like she's very much trying to be seen. <laughs> but like... I, and, uh, I don't recognize anybody's like superhero persona or anything. Actually, the idea was that I 
would have tried to break oh. in an hour early. Like, I'm not outside, if that's okay. Like, I'll roll oh, to pick yes. the lock if you want. Yes. No, I'm not calling, talking about you, bird lady. Oh, I'm talking okay. about the big bird lady. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The big, big bird lady. Hmm. But I did see... W- Winda the- has done a little bit of superhero things, but very... So it's literally up to Stephen and Doug as to you know what percentage you want to say. Oh, uh, he's a, I'm first. a fan. Leo is a fan of superheroes, so um, Ooh, definitely know when to. But Blowhard is just his favorite superhero. Make a difficulty three check. See Who me? You yeah, you. Oh, okay. Um, is this an intellect? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I think you're really good at those. Let's see, nineteen. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know about Winda. You know about yeah. his escapade. So like. I'm, I'm like under my hood. I'm like, oh my god. Um, I'm kind of torn. I'm gonna just sit there and watch and wait and see what they do. I have a, I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Um, because part of the connection between Leo and Katie is that she can see through his illusions and his tricks, mm-hmm. and he can see Elang. Does she see him? Does Elang see? Oh yeah, you would. Yeah, I mean, it's his distortion is not working. So yeah, you would just see him like peering over the edge. Sure. Yeah. Elang goes. Hmm. Katie will be interested in that. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Do you say that out loud? Yes. <laughs> so loud enough that Blow uh, Elang- heard you and Winda. Yeah. <laughs> Elang is an outside uh, processor and a big okay. dumb bird. <laughs> so you both hear that. Um, and you are all now in front of this uh, Capeless Capers detective agency. Yeah, I would uh, open the door and hold it open for the others. Right? Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, Window would not be, uh, like, sitting there waiting. Like, he would check, you know, try to open the door and was open to go in if not, he would be knocking. There's, okay. there's no hanging around as a superhero. It's action. Okay. All right. So uh, you guys I, I'm observing in. that and noting that, like, these guys don't mess around. They just take action. There's no <laughs> standing around. Um, and the increased security in the mall, courtesy of the hole in the, in the roof, just pointedly averse their gaze when they see all of you entering, because this is not kosher, but also way above their pay grade. <laughs> After they go in, I'm going to try to safely c- climb down from there. Okay, do you have a rope or something to do that with? Nope, just gumption and foolish uh, bravado and low okay. mic. Okay, <laughs> so make a might check or a speed check, your choice. Um, the difficulty for this to not be injured is going to be a six. Okay. I will do speed. Okay. And I will put some effort into it. So it's five, right? Because. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it costs three points. Come on, glass day. Ooh, the moon, which is a 20. Ooh, okay. So, so any effort is regained. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, you just kind of time it, you time it, you time it. You've seen many heroes do this, and you I do that a lot. I'm, I'm there for a while. Just land. Yeah. To be honest, where there's, where there's no cool. longer broken glass. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, so, you know, I just sort of look around, and then I'll try to creep in after them. I, I, my my goal is to sort of see what they're up to. Okay. So is trench coat dude in here when we walk in? So you guys walk into a um, staircase that leads upward. And when you climb the stairway, there's another door, which looks like an apartment door. Uh, I, I open. Okay, you open it and you immediately are hit with the smell of tobacco and uh, old Is it food. only tobacco? Uh, yes, it's only tobacco. <sighs> as well as uh, old food, a lot of peppermint. And um, you find yourself in a haphazard 
what looks like it's made up to be a lobby of some sort with a sofa and old magazines strewn about a coffee table with a still smoldering cigarette in it. Um, There's a desk with a big upholstered leather chair nearby a window. Um, And standing just looking out of the window through the blinds is this figure that is no longer wearing a trench coat, but is still wearing this messy, uh, tucked in, button up collared shirt. Uh, So I'm going to say, duh, I guess this note was from you. It was. Uh, please uh, have a seat. Anywhere. Not really one. For, you need to clear somewhere off. Clear somewhere off. Not really one for sitting. All right. Well, I'll sit. And he sits in this uh, chair and just kind of leans back. He kind of like sits there and like he'll you know, either tap on his leg or tap on a, a wall, but like he's jittery. Okay. Um, Elang closes the door after them. Okay. But a little bit too hard. And the door handle comes off <laughs> in okay. her hand. And then she just kind of like throws it to the side. It's like walks <laughs> the, the perfect room. hole through which Leo can spy in, the, in what's going on. <laughs> oh, yes. Well done. Oh, yes. Um, I'll. Uh... I'll fix that later, I guess. Uh, I expected you might have a problem with that or something. Um, My name is Walter Mathis. I'm a private investigator. And uh, you all are the heroes. Well, you three. I guess uh, another one is not about to show. Uh, Little Birdie told me she might, but hasn't shown up yet. So so that's what you think. And they have, like, a voice modulator in the beak, so it's, like, kind of Darth Vader-ified. <laughs> Not so, quite uh, that much. <laughs> you could, though, right? <laughs> so is this is this some kind of... You figured, you figured how to get, get in contact, and you're looking to hire, or are you looking to bribe? What, what, what's, what's going on here? Eagle. The Alang does not take bribes. Oh, uh, there's, there's, uh, it's not a bribe as much. It's a job. Blackmail? <laughs> I'll take her bribe. No, not <laughs> blackmail either. Uh, so, um, as you know, about five years ago, our society was wildly shocked when the heroes all disappeared. Um, before that, they were all sponsored and, uh, you know, it was on TV. It was a, like a sporting event. My my granny always said that uh, they were going to be judged one day for that. Maybe they were. I don't know. But for whatever reason, we're left with a bunch of uh, B-list villains running around and not a lot of heroes to stop them. Um, Are you offering a sponsorship? Because my other half would greatly appreciate payments for the property damage that has been incurred during my righteous behavior. <laughs> um, so uh, here's the Such thing. Such righteous uh, behavior it is. Thank you, Magpa. Um, so uh, I'm not offering you a sponsorship as much as a proper job. Uh, my goal is for all of you to help, regardless of what any sponsor would say, regardless of what anyone would try to direct you to do. Your conscience is your own, your interests. And he makes a point of looking at Magpie when he says that are your own. I'm here to offer you a little bit of uh, incentive for doing what you're already doing or what you already could do. Once again, making eye contact with Magpie there. Um, You know how birds cock their heads. (laughs) The mask does that. (laughs) Does Blowhard still have his hat and coat on and everything? Uh, Yeah, Uh, probably. He's kind of like standing off to the side. Yeah. I don't want you to be any, anybody's anything. I want you to be nobody's heroes. I want you to be your own selves. But when you do a job, I have a benefactor who would pay you. 
in order to do those jobs because someone needs to look out for the little guy. And right at that moment, then, uh, I'm going to use my illusion power to project an illusion of myself through the door. It's not super detailed. It's just like a monochrome thing, we'll say in this case. It's just white, sort of translucent. Okay. Just very excitedly. It's like, is this a superhero team up? If this is a superhero team up, I've got to be in. Oh, uh, well, um, yes. Who are you? I didn't invite you. Oh, are we accepting yeah. ghost on this team? Are, are you Ooh. are you the phantom that I heard about? I, I'm still workshopping, and I've been going by Nightlight. Nightlight. That's a weird okay, name for um, a ghost. Oh, I'm not a ghost. I'm an illusionist. I must I be sure. Out, through the I control room. the magic of colored lights. Are we letting this kid in? I mean, I mean, I'm right outside the door, so, so, and I like knock on it. There's already been quite a number of illusionists, so you get stuck with something like nightlight. Is not what you know. You turn on before you go to bed. I said a workshop. I, workshop I think it. that. Was I mean, I usually operate at night and I control light. I, I just, I don't know. It seemed like it felt right at the time. Lang thinks the name is comforting. Thanks. And the (laughs) for small children and babies, maybe they could make you into an action figure that they put on their bedside table that you press their chest, your chest at night, and you glow. So it would be a nightlight. Nightlight. That's for babies and small children. Do you? I've really got to get better with branding. I've got. I know. I got a lot to learn from all you, like branding and marketing and. Being people of action. How many Y's are in your name? None. That is something you should work on. There's opportunities for at least two Y's in there. There's no G's either. It's Y and G and what the young people like these days. Yeah, it's just I am just looking at the detective right now. Like, um, these are the people you invited here. So, um, here's the thing. There are a lot of indie heroes out there right now, and if you feel like you want to recruit some of them, all the better. More the merrier. But we need some kind of organized team to take on this city. And that's why I'm doing this. So You said is there this was a super money. Team origin? We're having a super team origin right now. That was the idea, kind of, yes. And uh, there is money and there are gadgets and toys, in fact. And uh, he reaches into his a desk drawer and he produces a, um, a flask of what looks like effervescent glowing liquid. Elang thinks this could be a trap. Young child, drink that first. I'm still outside, so I'd say. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't want to drink that. Uh, that's, um, that, that, that is, uh, Glogu. And, uh, it sticks on someone and it starts fizzing up and it impedes their movement and also, uh, makes them much easier to hit because they are, in fact, uh, a glow. And it stains Ooh. white. Young child, do not drink that. Uh, yeah, I Maybe I won't give it to the bird. And then he starts to hand it to Magpies or oh, the other bird. Uh, you know, who should I give this to? Oh. So have they let me in yet? Um, I think that they're waiting on you to come in. I think he's I, just I, I said, can I The come door's in? not locked. <laughs> there's no doorknob. Yeah. No. <laughs> door's well, not I'll just sort of like push it. Um, it, it is... Uh, Let's see. Let's do a happenstance roll. I got those from Robin, and I love them. I get this. From Door is in fact jammed shut, and the latch is closed, and there's no knob. I'm like, yeah, I, can I fix think that. it's jammed. Young I'll just like walk over, stick my fingers in there, and like pry the door open. I am very familiar with the inner mechanisms of doorknobs. <laughs> well, I I have never worked with a another. Well, another, never worked with a team. How do the rest of you feel about this menagerie idea? 
Do I, I see what you got going? there, went there with the menagerie term because two of us are related <laughs> to animals. Elang is very impressed. Well, we would be able to tackle greater threats as a team, I suppose. <gasps> what? And I am a little concerned about letting this one out upon the world alone and unsupervised. And I point the knife like to magpie. To you. No, like, to you. <laughs> he seems a little green around the edges. So does Again. that one. I say gesturing to Winda. Well, <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to go out anyway. I mean, if you're that concerned, you should take me with you. That way I'll be safer. And we're getting paid for this. Ah, yes. Friendship through pity. Oh, Great you tactic, are. young one. Definitely getting paid for it. Um, Also, uh, there's money involved? Th- there is money involved. Um. <sighs> Also, uh, I have I have a gift. Maybe for Magpie her. should money, manage your money for you, young one. Put it in trust. You're saying? I don't know. She's a villain, isn't she? You're a known <laughs> thief. This is quite a team you're putting together. Are you sure this is okay, Mr. Blowhard? I have skills. Wait a minute. You're that Magpie? Hi, sugar. And then I look to to the private the private eye. Why are you recruiting criminals? Well, why? I mean, we need all the help we can get. She's clearly very capable. Clearly. So so you're a uh, criminal. Why, why would you want to work with heroes? Well, he just said he was going to pay us. And it's not like I've got a particular attachment to any of the other villains in town. Also, if we're taking care of them, then there's less competition for me. And I'm not hurting anyone. I'm only taking things from people who can spare them. It's completely useless to rob poor people. Alang thinks that's very righteous. Alang also has no choice because Alang has immense property bills, including <laughs> my Elta's home, family home, which I damaged once when I accidentally came out. Uh, so yes, I will work with anyone for money at this point in time. Alang is very smart. Came out like out of a like out of a big sh- egg. Katie says I talk too much sometimes when it comes to my origins, so I should probably not say where I came out from. That is probably Wait. best. <laughs> Did I just say her name? Crap. Mm, I need mm. to get better at that. That's all right, Birdie. There's a lot of Katies. I don't That's know true. anyone named Katie. Yes. You, and she kind of like starts waving her bird arms around as if she has some kind of like <laughs> hypnotic ability that she does not have. <laughs> I don't want to there are that. many Katie's. There are many Katie's. So, uh, Phil well, I'll, I'll kind of like Phil? Poopy Trip. <laughs> What's the, oh. the private eye's name? Walter uh, Mathis. Walter. Walter. Uh, he looked like a Walter. So do you have a specific um you have a specific job for us or is this like something filled us up you want to keep us on retainer what 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 is that what you got going on Well I was thinking retainer but uh that looks interesting and he's looking past all of you to the television that's now playing and uh you see um the journalist used to be the hero that sort of was the host of the game show-esque, sports-esque uh, news reel that was heroic endeavors. And now it has been taken over by her sidekick, uh, Paperboy, who's now five years older. There, mm-hmm. You see this uh, young man wearing uh, suspenders and like a Newsies cap and everything. And he's uh, standing outside uh, your TV station, actually, Winda. And he's like, uh, yeah, r- reports right now are coming in that uh, there is a new villain who is currently manipulating the weather. As you can see, it's a little chaotic. And he's like holding onto his hat as a sudden gust of wind blows up and it has sand in it. Um, meanwhile, the weather keeps shifting from like this arid sandstorm to like a blizzard. Ooh. Where does he think we are, Ohio? <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> it seems that uh, this villain has captured one of the local television station uh, big wigs. And uh, you see um, Window would recognize Mr. Smith is currently uh, tied to the antenna at the top of the building. And uh, you see a uh, figure wearing um, like this uh, spandex navy colored uh, with purple costume that looks almost like he's supposed to be wearing a suit, but if he's like three a suit pieces and a superhero outfit <laughs> and mashed them together. <laughs> um, is it like you said it is about as crazy weather on the TV? Uh-huh, is there's it, all is, kinds of crazy weather on the TV right now. It, it, if I look from the TV out the window, can I see like it far in the distance? And, um, you know. What are you trying to do? I'm sorry. I was just curious if like, you know, they like look out the window, it's like, it's right there, you know, or like you can see it off in the distance. Um, oh yeah, you can totally do that. <laughs> just in the middle of the night, the night has just fallen and there is bizarre weather patterns happening over the TV station with these swirling, coalescing, billowing clouds. And no lightning as of yet, but it's hailing and then it's a blizzard and then it's a sandstorm. And then you swear it looks like their ground is shaking and it's a whole mess of different things all at once. Well, I've never stolen a news anchor before. Well, I guess we got a it. job to do. First job? I guess we can see what this whole menagerie is about then. All right. Excellent. Well, um, I'll leave you to that then. Uh, come back here when you're done and you will receive payment in full and some nice treats and gadgets. And we'll be helping treats people. And gadgets. Money. Uh, yes, and helping people. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, quick, quick, quick question. Are we indemnified from the property damage that we do do? Uh, you said you are, in fact, because <laughs> uh, I have contacts different places, not the least of which happens to be uh, the local hardware store down here in the mall. Um, there is there's a hardware and carpentry shop that does home repairs, actually. So uh, oh, Yeah, my dad, I mean, I heard some of the stores in the mall often use them for work and their stores. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, so... so uh, did, did we get the door open yet? Um, yes. Yeah, yes. Magpie yes. did it. Magpie opened right. the door. Uh, well, I think we can hash all this stuff out later. Shouldn't we get a move on? That's when there's I a agree. rotten egg. Uh, I'm slipping out the door. Uh, Steven, all would right. it be too far of a stretch to say I have a motorcycle? It is not too far of a stretch to say that at all. All right. Just as Magpie leaves, oh. uh, it land like spending two might points suddenly this like giant santi traditional uh sword like comes out of her chest and she's all like she goes to go straight up again and she goes oh wait no i've already made a hole somewhere else okay i'll see you there oh wait and then she kind of like grabs leo in her other i was was about to call an uber and be like (laughs) you wanna fly so yeah. we just kind of like scoots through all of you and just begins like zipping out through the, the, the stairway, uh, moving quite fast. Okay. Okay. So I can fly too, but I'm not fast at it. I'm probably going to get there last, but that's fine. I don't need to get there immediately. I just need to get there when the chaos has already started. Fast, <laughs> <just completely left. laughs> so are fast, you like, fl- are, is Magpie like floating? Yes. Like, have you seen Adventure Time? It's kind of like Marceline. <laughs> yeah, so you can probably around. either, like, hold on to a lang or the motorcycle. Oh my god, can I, like, throw you a rope and, like, be the balloon off the back of your motor? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Okay, so this chaotic... Like parasailing. Scene, yeah. You have this crazed, burned weatherman currently uh, dressed like a supervillain, controlling the weather apparently, um, as he waves his arms and the weather changes and his hands begin glowing with this purple lightning-esque energy. And you see this 
hero with a leaf on his face blowing back as he rides on these awesome winds towards danger. Green smoke wafting off of him the whole while. A giant bird lady carries a uh, teenage white clad hero who I don't know if he's screaming or not. But oh yeah. Intense. <laughs> Is she carrying him cradled like a baby? <laughs> I like to think like a backpack. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I'm the way and I'm telling her like, I've only ever, you know, face down like shaplifters and stuff. So just fair warning. Hero tip, don't die. <laughs> All right. I'm learning so much tonight. Yeah! <laughs> and the coolest one of all is riding his motorcycle, Johnny Silver, <laughs> AKA Blow Hard. Riding his motorcycle and tailing behind him like a balloon. <laughs> Surfing on the air itself is Magpie. You sense. all arrive together uh, roughly at the same time. And uh, what do any of you strike a pose or do anything heroic? Definitely gonna like power slide the bike to a stop. Okay. When when does not a cool superhero? He, he's not. He, he he might get the job done, but he, he's not trying to inspire. <laughs> to to. <I> like uh, that. <laughs> A lug touches down and kind of like throws Johnny, sorry, uh, throws um, Nightlight <laughs> in the air on the way down. And be like, and like whispers in his ear. Now, hero pose. All right, and I'll, and uh, this, make, this I'll just like, do like a pulse, you know, like a light, like, you know, sort of pattern on him. Even though he lands awkwardly, but it masks it. And you see Haverboy standing off to the side and he shouts, what, is this a new team of heroes? There's a giant Damn right. bird lady. We thought that was a monster earlier. No, it's a hero. Well, every hero has to have an awkward origin story. Am I right, folks? And, oh, look, it's Nightlight, the renowned capturer of shoplifters everywhere. And uh, I'm renowned? I don't remember that man. Oh, sir, Leaf Face, what's your name? Winda. Uh, Winda. All right, Winda, and oh look, it's Blowhard. Now here we go. This is a real hero, and is that a villain among their ranks? Hide. A new leaf. It is in my best interest. The other villains don't see me doing this. They'll make fun of me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elang literally goes magpie and like waves a hand towards something that's not there. <laughs> Like, cause she's not there. It's just like, uh, <laughs> it's not here. <laughs> and amusing, as you gesture backward, your arm is disappearing in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. At this point, I need everybody to roll initiative. Okay. Woo. Is it a speed check? Is there? It is a speed check. He has a ten difficulty for him. Uh, remind uh, me. Ten difficulty. Is this the D twenty. So basically, yes. yeah. in order to go yeah. before him, okay. you have to beat a ten. No. Oh. Well, I can't. Okay. I can't get under that. You can't get under thirty. No, I can't get under ten. No, no. No, under oh, 10, oh, under oh. twenty. All right. And what is spending effort do again? Uh, spending effort lowers the difficulty. So actually, technically, the difficulty is like a three. Oh. Because it's like middle I, tier. I got a nat twenty. So okay. Okay, well, what does spending effort on an initiative roll do? One of the uh, power three. shifts they took. Adds three. Adds three. Oh, yeah. okay. I have a 22. 25. Oh, right. <laughs> um, so mm. I got a five, but I'm in hindered. So you have a two. So what the, I got a two. So you, you, you is... subtract three from your roll. That, that's not really how it works. You, you, ch you, you order the, the difficulty. Not the actual uh, die roll, but in this uh, in this case, you're trying to beat his number, which is a ten. So like, it's easier just to mod with initiative. It's right. easier to modify your roll. Initiative is the one that's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, it, but uh, so you got a twenty five, right, Magpie? Yeah. What is Leo's uh for that thing? Just a twenty. 
Just the 20? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have any bonuses or anything. Win, duh. I literally capitalized all the duh. The <laughs> duh. Um, duh. Wait, uh, blow Is hard, he a yeah. What'd you have? What did Blowhard get? 16. Oh, no. 16, Pretty okay. Good. Magpie, you're up first. Okay, so I'm not trying to get into a fight here. I'm terrible with that. What I am trying to do is hide myself and like get into an advantageous position to seal this news anchor that's tied to the top of the building. So I'm just sneaking my way up there to uh, position myself to act later when everybody else has caused a distraction. <laughs> Okay, that would be a mic check, and you're trying to scale a building. So that's yep. going to be a difficulty of five. Okay, so I rolled a 15. A 15? All right. So, yeah, that means you exactly hit it. All right, yeah, it's going to take me a minute to get back into the sway of Cypher. I apologize. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so I am going to add a GM intrusion at this point. Okay. So uh, you get an experience and you can hand one to someone else. All right, let's go with Blowhard um, this time. All right, Blowhard, you get an experience. And Magpie, you have an experience. And uh, Magpie, you can choose to get all the way up to the building, all the way up the building this turn. But Weatherman is going to see you. Or you can make it halfway up the building this turn and make it the rest of the way up next turn. No, let him see me. I'm a known villain. I can convince him that I'm on his side. Mm. Okay. All right. Cool. Very cool. All right. So, uh... Double agents. Winda, you're up next. What are you doing, sir? Uh, so, we we see this, you know, spandex, uh, you know, wet weather person. Uh, clearly, uh -huh. you know, being a villain, I'm gonna blast him. Okay. I will, I will get gather the winds in front of me and send it at him. Okay. What is uh what is the difficulty? The difficulty for him, I'm looking at that right now. Uh he is a difficulty three. Oh, he's not very hard to hit. Oh. <laughs> no. Well, All right. Um that's an eleven. So that's seven points of onslaughty damage as the winds buffet him. Eleven points of damage. No, no, no. Se seven. Seven, seven. Oh, seven. Better. Seven points of damage. Ouch. So, um, so you uh, well, how does that look for you? I want to ask you actually. So he you know, it's it's wind power. So he's kind of like, you know, flying, floating you know, above everything else, and he just kind of pulls the winds around him and just kind of blasts it, you know, directly at him. Okay, so the winds blast him, and you guys see as he, like, swipes and does this wind maneuver, it's almost like you, for a moment, see flickers of green glowing energy on the wind as it just, boom, and it's followed by a little bit of smoke. <laughs> And he, it like knocks the wind out of him briefly. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? And you immediately recognize that voice, Wind. Uh, uh but today is not your day. You are not going to win this one. Wind. I'm going to win everything I wanted because they turned on me. And so if I don't get to do the weather, then they don't get to do the weather because I control the weather. Uh. <laughs> and Nightlight, you're up. What are you doing? <sighs> so this is all happening up in the sky and we're on the ground? Yes, it, it's up on the rooftop. He's standing on the rooftop of the uh, TV station. But it's not like a skyscraper. Um, is it? it is not a skyscraper. Oh, okay. It's just a TV so station. Okay, I was imagining it was like super like three duper stories fire. tall. Oh, okay. In that case, then, so is does he have like this cloud of weather around him? Um, so he's controlling the weather in the immediate area. So it's not around him. It's like around everywhere. I'm gonna use my vast intellect and knowledge of optics and lasers to make. I'm basically just using my onslaught ability as well, but in this, uh, I am refracting it off 
the cloud-like vapors to, and I'm gonna do the other way of that, which is attacking his intellect by disorienting him, dazzling him. So that is, what was it, difficulty three? Uh, yes, difficulty three to hit him. Just, yeah, I, I, meet it, I met it, so, so that's okay. a mental thing, but I also power shift it, so that is five points of intellect damage, then it ignores armor. Okay. All right, so he, uh, you blast him with this laser and it uh, hits him in the shoulder and he sort of topples for a minute doing this spin thing. And he's like, "Okay, <laughs> you should be on my side there in just. And well, you're endangering over. innocent people. Look at that poor guy right there. He's anything but innocent, you. And he points at Magpie. You fight for the little man. You would know. I do what now? Uh, in his mind. And Blowhard, sure. you're up. And, uh, so is he flying or just standing? He's not flying right now. Okay, so I don't know if he can fly or not. And he is above me. Mm-hmm. So Blowhard is going to do what he does best. And he is going to blow hard. <gasps> And then I just blow a cone of air in his direction. And it can move him one immediate distance. And since I'm kind of under him, I guess I'm going to push him up into the air. Okay. One range. Okay. So uh, you got to hit him with an attack then, right? Uh, Let's see. Oh, yeah. Two might. Um... Got to pay me. Got to pay to ride the roller coaster. Um, it does not actually say, but I'll assume I have to hit. If a power costs one point and you have an edge of one, is it basically free? Um, yeah. Oh, in that case, I can. That's so a free roll. I want to, to let's see. <laughs> I guess I'm going to, I'm going to spend, um, I guess it's a range attack, so it's speed. So I will spend spend um, in order to use it or not to use it but in order I have to spend like use it but I'm going to spend in order to make it one uh, make it easier. easier one after okay <laughs> so what is the target number nine three. Uh, so you make it a six. Oh yeah target is nine you would make it a six by spending by right, spending that is a 17 so Thanks, that is a minor effect Oh, yeah. Okay, so what do you want to do? Uh, you know what? I just want to disorient him so he's hindered on his next action. Okay. Nice. So you... And when you do, you blow him up into the air, and you see he starts spinning and spiraling, and he remains there even after your wind is done. Hmm. And he's like, oh, this is new, but okay. <laughs> And it is his turn. He is disoriented. So um, he is going to have a uh, hindrance to do a thing. And I'm going to start with his mechanic, which is his powers are wild and he can't control them. So I roll a d6 to decide what effect he's doing. So he uh, shouts at a blowhard because you just disoriented him. How ice to meet you! <laughs> and throws his hand out and because this sweltering heat blasts you. And uh, just this wave of heat that ripples the air. And uh, you uh, have to try to defend with your speed or your might. Well, I will always choose might over speed. Okay. And it's a, it's a three? It is a three. All right, and I will spend effort in order to drop it down. Uh, so that's an 11 on the die. Oh, yeah, yeah. You defend easily, so you just dodge out of the way. He clearly is so disoriented, it goes very wide as he's still kind of moving and spinning a little bit in the air. 
Oh, you Eli. know what? It wouldn't have. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have been a three. It would have been a two because a he's two. hindered. So then I pro I wouldn't oh, yeah. have spent it then if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So yeah, Eli. What is the hero Elang Elang doing? Is going to uh, spend one might point and become very big. Oh my! <laughs> How big is very big? Uh, nine feet tall. Three nine meters tall. Feet tall. Um, and you I add four points tall. to my might, and yeah, wow. one to my armor and two to my might edge, uh, and I get it for a minute. Oh I my think. gosh! Okay. And she, uh, the only other thing that she does because she's used her action is uh, she darts forward, flies up to be within melee range of. Okay. Albert. Because you're big, I'm going to let you make a might check to try to. You, wait, well, you have flight, don't you? Yep. So you can two. just move up there then. So yep. you're just moved up and you are just in his face now. This nine foot bird, you feel the roof crunch just a little bit under your feet as you land heavily. And now, Hello. Andy Lang are up there. And speaking of, Magpie. This is going to hurt you a lot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> alright, so this guy, how's he tied to this pillar thing? Yes, you see this man just screaming like, what's going on? Get me out of here! What are you doing? Is he tied How with ropes? Or is there a lock involved? Nope, it's just rope. Cool, uh, before I untie him, I'm gonna steal his wallet. Okay, you can have nice. that. I'm not even gonna make you roll for it. Alright, cool, and then I'm gonna untie him and start getting him out of here. Okay. So uh, that's your uh, your round, and he kind of yep. looks at you like, "What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Get your Time hand to go." I said, I, I muttered to myself, "That's why we need a thief on the team." And uh, oh, by the way, I did sleight of hand that wallet. I was trying not to let him know where no, I meant you, see me you take it. You can just oh, yeah. stole him away from the from yeah. From our... <laughs> um. So yeah, that's, he'll that's what Leo was. He thinking. doesn't have any better options right now. Uh, so he's going with you. Uh, Winda, you're up. All right, so I will move uh, directly above him. Uh, and, you know, so I, this is what winning is like. And I'll blast him with uh, uh, another thing of energy or with another with another onslaught. That's a 16. 16 will absolutely do it. So that's another seven damage. Ouch. Oh, man. This man's hurting right now. Hurting bad. And uh, that is that all you're doing on your turn? Yep, that's it. Um... Okay. So um, at this point, I am going to interlude a uh, GM intrusion. As you blow him with your wind and you spin him because he has this heat wave going, it is, you're going to have to make a choice. Okay. Either you can keep him disoriented and it will hit one of your allies, or you can not have him spinning anymore and it will not hit one of your allies. We'll go with the not hit the allies. Okay. So he writes himself with your wind power. It sort of gets him not spinning anymore. And uh, you get an experience point, you can give one to somebody else. Uh, you know, let's keep the circle going. So I guess this goes back to uh, Leo. Okay. All right. So Nightlight. Oh, it's my turn. Um, it is your turn. Oh, uh, oh. oh, oh, oh you were just XP. saying. Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, XP sorry. goes to you, but I do yeah. believe you're up next in the image. Oh. Yep. Both. Is there any like in it, people in danger or anything? I mean. Um. So no one is currently in danger because it is nighttime and they've cleared the streets and it's just Paperboy announcing this, giving a play-by-play -play to his cameraman as you guys are doing all of this. Hmm, I can't get up there. I'm gonna hype our team and talk to Paperboy just excitedly. And I'm going to, as I'm doing that, I'm gonna just make an illusion of, hmm. Of like a uh, little light array around window to just make him look coolly lit up while he's kicking this guy's butt in the sky, and just okay. talk to him. and and then I'll, and and then I'll just like you know I'll just position myself near Paperboy and be like, yeah, we just came together because 
we saw this weather disturbance going on. It's a good thing we did, because this guy looks like he's really causing a lot of uh, chaos uh, in town. And just just to make us sound good. So, But yeah, I just want to make an illusion to sort of like make Winda look cooler. Okay, so Winda, all of a sudden, it's like there are these, uh, these luminous petals, much like Doug's actual effect he has going on there. Yes. Just circling all around you, like wafting petals in the wind, like you're this amazing hero, riding in tandem with the smoke that encircles you with your winds. Sparkly and, snow. Uh, you look super cool. Um, <laughs> Nightlight, go ahead and make an intellect roll. Uh, difficulty will be two to make your team look and sound so much cooler. See, that's a 17 on the day. 17, so it absolutely works. Paperboy tries to correct you saying it's paper man now, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Grown up. Oh. <laughs> and- uh, I respect the hustle. And he, he sort of like tries to avert the- Wait, is paper man an actual superhero persona and his power is like reporting at crimes? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't click. So, me until so this like time. Paper Boy's power, you would know, is he can manipulate like paper puppets, sort of like Kubo and the Two Strings. Okay. So yeah, just origami stuff. Sure. Um, okay, good. So uh, Nightlight has gone blowhard. It's you. All right. So I'm going to use one of my breath attacks, and this is like, like kind of like a Kia, uh, and he uh -huh. exhales his breath at them. Uh, so te technically, it kind of like replaces a punch attack, and fists are fists are considered light weapons, and they would they get a um, an enhancement or whatever it's called. An asset. Uh -huh. An asset. They get an asset. Yeah. The um, and I power shift at my you know basically my punch attacks to so it'll go out to range increments, and then I also power shift it to increase the damage by by, by three. So okay. I guess it's a, a nine will be down to a uh, six. That's, a, that's our team leader, Blowhard. He's going to kick his butt. Watch. That's a 13. Uh, I didn't vote for him. Work. How much do medium weapons do? Is that? Uh, oh? It's one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, oh, so it's two, two three, one, two, three. plus three. So five points. Five. Okay. So um, how do you want to defeat Weatherman? Uh, it just hits him in the gut and, you know, basically in the solar plexus and blasts the air out of him. And he just, like, drifts to the ground, hunched over in a ball. Okay. So you see this man just, oh, oh, and he's holding his stomach and kind of whining as he's rocking back and forth and just like a little leaf floating, fluttering down until he lands on the ground and the police officers around just start descending on him. Like in a dog pile. I mean, I did tell you that was gonna hurt. <laughs> Committing crime and... in the end always blows. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, Elaine looks again underneath where her claws have like damaged the building and just kind of like <laughs> quietly lifts them off and like flies back down to the ground. Okay, and just for fun, I'm gonna add one more GM intrusion. <laughs> when you when you lift your claw up, you realize you've broken all the way through the rooftop, and so it just crumbles in your <laughs> claw as you let go, and now there's a hole in the roof. So, as, as I say it, I was that's covered by our insurance. That, that's that's <laughs> it's okay now. It's all good. Go to Walter Mathis. At PA. Ca capeless capers. Yeah, right. He'll take care of everything. Don't stop billing it to me. It's not me anymore. Okay, yeah. okay. As Meanwhile, I say in his it, office, I he's cursing under his breath. You're not supposed to tell him it's me. What is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, so, as I said it, I second guessed my myself. So I looked it up. It's actually two, four, six, not one, one, oh. two, three. Yeah, okay. you gave. So. I think those are the numbers for armor. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you three. definitely own him. <laughs> so he's more owned. Than you. Yep. And uh, Winda, you hear uh, Weatherman screaming curses and shouting out uh, your name and shouting about how he hates he, he hates that windy superhero just as much as that uh, terrible son of a bitch who stole his job and blah, blah, blah. 
So I'll kind of like, uh, you know, have the winds around me kind of pick up and I'll just kind of like float in a circle, like, you know, m mocking him. And I'll just like, winning, duh. <laughs> <laughs> what an a-hole. <laughs> Stole his job. <laughs> no, he didn't. Like, I got fired because it's like... Elaine, like, puts her hand around Nightlight and then, like, tilts her head down so it's in the camera because she's so tall at this point. <laughs> and is like, it is not like young people and children. Press his chest and she, like, taps <laughs> Nightlight's chest. I'll and you will feel up. safe from the dark. Yeah. Nightlight. I love it. That's my new catchphrase. <laughs> um... Meanwhile, Magpie, um, <laughs> safe from the dark. The uh, you uh, you get this man down to the other side of the building, uh, Mr. Smith, and uh, there's great he, merchandising uh, potential. He looks at you and he's like, "Well, thank you for the uh, save there. Uh, I thought you were a villain, to be honest." Oh, I am. All right, well, um, he <laughs> said he was going to electrocute me. Oh. Nah. All right, well, um, uh, I, uh, he, he dropped, uh, when, when we were struggling, he dropped something. So I, uh, we'll thought, go find out what it is. Well, here, and he hands it to you. Oh. And um, it's it looks like a blank black business card. It's made of metal. And when you turn it over and it catches the light just right, it says calling all villains. I see. Is there a number on this or anything? Um, make an intellect check. We can run that through a spectra now analysis. Uh, assuming I tell you about it. Yes, yeah, so Lang assumes that Magpie will not tell us about it. I don't think uh, you're 19. anything. 19. <laughs> so, um, you see that uh, there is not a phone number, but instead when you flip it over and catch the light once again, it has um, what looks like uh, letters and numbers put together. If it weren't all letters and numbers together and instead just numbers, you would suspect that it was a phone number or okay. maybe an address. Okay. Now I'm just going to assume Magpie is not quite smart enough to put together exactly how to crack this code on her own. So she's gonna have to show somebody. So in other Rats. words, it's so in other words, it's a, a cipher? It is oh, a cipher. <laughs> It is That's a like cipher a pun, man. for nobody's heroes in the first session. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and um, that's actually where we're going to cut it for tonight. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for playing. I know it ran a little over. Thank you for indulging me. We had to get everybody introduced. And yeah, you guys, this is an amazing group. Y'all characters are fantastic. This is the best. <laughs> well, thanks for running, Steven. It's a great game. Thanks everyone for playing and watching. And as you've seen in the chat periodically, we still have a Kickstarter going on. It funded today. Um, and also, since we have you on, Mootly, thank you for giving, you know, doing a TikTok for us. We really appreciate that. And for everyone else that's been sharing and, and backing the project. So you guys can go check that out. And we'll be back here next week with some more Nobody's yes. Heroes. So until next time. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, so if you're looking for some more uh, fifth edition gameplay, you can join myself and Robin uh, on this channel Friday night for the next uh, session of Untraditionally Arcane, as well as some also uh, other great gamers as well. Yes. So come hang Amazing. out. Amazing. I will be here with the live chats as well. So you yeah. know, stop in at noon. Until next time, stay nerdy. Stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Doug, do you have a band-aid on your finger?